What is up guys? It's Paul back with another Fallout 4 little extra credit video for you. <laughs> so it seems like in just about every other video I post, someone is asking me about what kind of clothing my character's wearing, what kind of gear he's using, especially the head cap there. And, uh, you know, on occasion, sometimes some of the weapons I'm using. So I thought I'd put out a little, uh, buddy. what's up, buddy? Would you like a cold one or did you want to hear a joke? Uh, not this time. Not this time. Uh, maybe we should just walk away. <laughs> Hopefully that won't glitch anything. Alright, sorry buddy. I'll get back to you later. You're my drinking buddy? Okay. Anyway, I am standing, as a matter of fact, in front of my epic settlement, my Finch Farm Bridge Bunker. If you guys haven't seen that video, uh, I did a whole tour of this place, and it's pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, uh, if it seems a little bit like I'm a little mellow in this video, it's because I am actually recording this late at night, and uh, I in post, the audio probably sounds fine because I've boosted the audio, but uh, as I'm recording this, I'm actually whispering a little bit so I don't disturb my neighbors. <laughs> and get kicked out like PewDiePie did from his apartment or his townhouse or whatever. So uh, ho hopefully the audio still works out well. The reason I'm recording this late at night is because I want to put out a uh, behind the scenes video next week and it's gonna be probably a fairly long one and I wanna make sure I have time to do that so I'm not delayed. I'll be working on that all through the weekend. Anyway, let's get on to what the character's wearing so I can refer people to this video when they uh, ask in the comments section what is that? So most of my uh, viewers who have been following along through all of my trivia walkthroughs have seen me pull up my Pip-Boy and in many of the videos I've actually explained what I'm wearing. But you know, you can't expect everybody to scour through every video that I've put out. You know, they're going to naturally ask questions as much as I'd like for them to watch every single one of my videos. It's a little unrealistic. So I thought I'd put a little compilation video together and show you guys uh, what all this gear is that I'm wearing since uh, it does get asked about quite a bit. Okay, so let's just pop right into my pit boy and you know, I'm not on a PC so I can't do the thing where you float away from him and see him from a distance, but hopefully you guys can see all this stuff that he's wearing and I can sort of analyze it and explain it as I go through my pit boy. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump into the pit boy and I will start on the apparel side because that's where I seem to get the most questions about the gear. And I will start off with the stuff that I'm wearing and then I'll explain some of the other stuff that I carry around in just a second. Okay, so the thing I get asked about most is this wrapped cap, all right? This thing right here, <laughs> it doesn't look quite as good without it being on, but uh, the reason I wear this thing is because as you can see on the left there, it boosts perception by one. And it also is the closest thing that I've found in the game to achieving a, here, let me step out of this, to achieving a sort of, uh, how, how can I describe it? A sort of special forces ninja look, you know? Maybe a, like a Navy SEAL, Delta Force, Army Rangers type look. And that's kind of what I was going for with this character because he's got, you know, this great stealth build. And I could wear this hooded cat, this, um, uh, what's this thing called? I forgot what it's called, but this guy's wearing it over here. He's passing me by and I put it on him. It's from Far Harbor, actually. The reason I don't wear that is because it doesn't do anything to boost any of your stats. It's called the Hooded cap, I don't know, I'll put a pop-up for you guys if I can remember the name of it later. But anyway, it achieves the same effect. It's basically a hood with a, a bandana, but it doesn't boost any stats. This thing at least boosts my perception by one, which is awesome. Okay, so that explains that. Where you find it, it's a fairly common item actually in the Commonwealth. You can probably find it from vendors, from clothing stores, like for example in Diamond City. I've run across several just pulling them off raiders or even dead settlers that I find. I'm surprised people think it's a rare item because I've found a ton of them. It just takes uh, a little patience. And if you don't feel like, uh, you know, looting dead bodies to find them, then you just keep visiting some of the uh, clothing shops. I think Becky's in Diamond City, but I think they're pretty much gonna be found just by exploring and looting. 
Okay, the next thing I have on is the wraparound goggles. And once again, I'm wearing this because it boosts perception by one. And plus, you know, it's probably the closest thing to something that a special forces would wear. And with this perception boost and this perception boost, uh, it does boost my perception by several. I've got some other things that are boosting perception as well, but the more perception that you can get boosted from clothing items, the better your accuracy is gonna be in VATS, you know, as well as other perks and skills that come into play with that. So that is the reason I wear these two things, the wedding ring, just cause you know, it, valuable and you know it's part of the character part of the backstory i'm not married myself but uh the character is and was so even though he's gotten quite friendly with kate <laughs> yeah. okay moving on to the other items this is the bandana i wear it's plain green i had a camo one but it didn't quite look as good you know at least the color matches the next item i'm going to show you which is the military fatigues and the reason I wear the military fatigues is, as you can see there on the right, or now on the left, they boost agility by two. That's very significant because, as you can see here, agility affects your action points and your ability to sneak. So I haven't found that I need a whole lot of armor with this guy because he is a just an epic sneak character and I really don't get hit very often. And the reason for that is because my agility is so high and the perks I've chosen for the character are all oriented towards sneaking and hiding and that sort of thing. So I sacrifice the armor for uh, the stat boosts and that's what I get. So anyway, that leads us on to the main armor items. I do have some armor items, but you'll see why I'm wearing these armor items as I go through them. And it is because they all give some kind of benefit. All right, so we'll start with the Overseer's Left Guard. Uh, this isn't actually the item from Vault 81. This is an exact replica of the item. As you can see, the value is much lower. I just decided to call it the Overseer's Left Guard in commemoration of that item because I originally bought that item, as I mentioned in one of my videos, found this item and then sold that one back. So I got my money back. Now I have this one, it's exactly the same thing and it doesn't have the weird pauldron on it. So I added the shadow mod to make it sort of dark colored, pocketed because I carry a lot of loot for settlement building and it ends up making the character have these nice symmetrical shoulder guards and uh, they're dark colored and they just, they look cool. Okay, now I should say that if you watch some of my older videos, the majority of these armor items were all chameleon armor. And I loved that chameleon armor. The problem is, is that, hey, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, the problem is, is that the chameleon armor started glitching out on me big time. In fact, I'll put a little pop up for the video where it finally went over the top and I had to uh, abandon the chameleon armor. It was, I believe the first Far Harbor episode. What happened was my character ended up completely invisible. <laughs> <laughs> even when he was just conversing with people and uh, it made it so that I couldn't see my, unfortunately, my pit boy. So I ended up having to abandon all of the chameleon armor and things return to normal, except for the occasional glitch once in a while. For example, if you saw in my, uh, what happens if we close the gate on Diamond City video, <laughs> I attempted to fast travel to Diamond City and it still showed up. But once again, that was a one-off thing. Fortunately, it doesn't happen all the time anymore. And now I can actually go into my Pip-Boy and see what's going on while I'm in uh, hide or sneak mode, which is extremely helpful. And it wasn't allowing me to do that with the chameleon armor. I haven't noticed a terrible difference in the ability for enemies to detect me. They do detect me slightly more often without the chameleon armor, but it's not so significant that I need to uh, endure that glitch. So what I did was I traded in all of the chameleon armor for all of these uh, separate pieces that give these different benefits. So the next thing I have is called the cunning. I think it was originally called cunning combat armor or something. It has the cunning legendary effect, which gives a plus one to agility and plus one to perception. So that's the other item that's boosting both of those abilities, which are my primary abilities for this sneak build. And once again, I just added the shadowing and the pocketing to it. Okay, moving on. Now I got the legs. This thing is gonna increase my action point refresh speed, which helps because I use VATS quite a bit. And I didn't have a whole lot of other options for a leg. You know, like I 
collected and stashed a bunch of legendary items over the many levels, <laughs> but I, I didn't have so much of a selection for some reason with the right leg. But this one actually worked out pretty well, so I decided to uh, go ahead and add it to my repertoire. The next item I have is a speed legendary effect, which increases my movement speed by 10%. I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but I'm mainly wearing it for the recording of the videos for you guys, so I can move a little faster during my gameplay and things aren't kind of lagging behind when I'm sneaking. So it's just, it's for you guys. I'm wearing it for you guys. It's all for you. All right, next I have the uh, VATS chest, which is a reduction in action point costs. And this is the same as the Overseer's left guard, which I call it. I don't know if these stack. I'm hoping they do. Basically, I'm wearing it on the faith that they might work together and I'd get a 20% reduction in action point costs. And I do have a feeling that they stack because my deliverer now is just absolutely over the top in VATS. It can't even reach the end of the, uh, the little action point bar. <laughs> That's how many shots I get in, in VATS with the deliverer, it, it's sick. So I'm assuming that these are stacking, which is great. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at some of the other items that I carry around just for the appropriate occasions. These two items, acrobats, left and right metal legs, are for unlimited falling. Now, I'm not gonna go into this too much because I made an entire video about how if you grab these two items off of legendary creatures, keep them in your inventory, then you can put them both on and basically fall an unlimited distance. I will show you, it's a really fun video. I have some fun with some super mutants in that video too. So I'll put a pop up for that and you guys can check out how these two armor pieces work in tandem. It is extremely cool. And if you saw my settlement tour video, I actually fell through a trap door on purpose because I had these two things on and it allowed me to fall all the way from the top of my settlement down to the ground and not take a lick of damage. Okay, I carry the army fatigues because I trade these out when I start to get uh, near my carry limit. I basically trade out the military fatigues for the army fatigues. And what happens is, is that I lose a point of agility, but I gain a point of strength, which is, I think, a temp boost, let's see, I have a seven and I can carry 300. Now I can carry 310, exactly. Okay, so that's why I carry that, it gives me an extra 10, you know, a little bit of breathing room. All right, next I carry around some black rim glasses, which I combine with the Lieutenant's hat and Reginald's suit for a massive increase to charisma whenever I need to enter some dialogue and do some persuasion. So right now my Charisma is seven, which isn't bad. I pop on the black room glasses, the lieutenant's hat, Reginald's suit, which is basically takes up all the inventory slots. And now I have a 12. So a 12, wait, Reginald's suit is, oh, it's three. I thought it was two. Wow, that's even more awesome than I thought. Okay, so uh, yeah, three charisma boost, one and one, and that's five. So seven plus five is 12. And that usually helps me pass the majority of my persuasion checks. And if there's anything super tough, I can always pop some great men tats or something like that, or maybe just a beer if I need a, a single extra point or something like that. The black room glasses are a fairly common item in the Commonwealth. Find them by looting or just going to a clothing vendor. The Lieutenant's hat is actually a reward for completing the last voyage of the USS Constitution quest. And you actually have to complete the quest and then go visit Ironsides, old Captain Ironsides, at the new location where the ship lands. I won't spoil it for you if you haven't done that quest yet, but if you want to watch the walkthrough, I do some really fun trivia walkthroughs with that quest, and uh, I will put a link in the description and the iCard above. Okay, and I didn't do a walkthrough for the quest where you get Reginald's suit, but it's basically the quest where you can also recruit Strong as one of your companions. I think he's a pain in the ass, but uh, I think the quest is, it involves Trinity Tower and you will get a radio distress signal in Diamond City. So most of you have probably seen that show up in your radio section if you haven't uh, completed that. Let's see if it's still here. It's not there anymore. Okay. So once you complete the quest, the radio signal goes away. <laughs> but assuming you complete the quest, then he will reward you with this suit. 
doesn't look great. It's kind of a surveyor's outfit, basically, but uh, pretty funny. <laughs> oh, man. I don't see how anybody finding this character looking like that would be any more charismatic than uh, he normally is, but that's the way it goes. Okay, back into the pit boy. And the next item, let me put my normal stuff back on so I can make sure I've covered everything. Okay, so I got this captain's hat from one of the Far Harbor quests. And I'm keeping it in my inventory in case I need to do any long distance running during one of my trivia walkthroughs. Once again, just to speed things up for you guys. And I'm assuming that it's gonna stack with this. I don't know if they stack. If you guys know if they stack or if you've had multiple legendary effects of the same ilk and you found that they do stack, then definitely leave a comment down below. I'm sure we could all benefit from your wisdom. And I think that's about it on the uh, apparel side. I think I've gone through everything. So now I'm gonna take a quick look at the weapon side and then we'll wrap up this video. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, weapons. All right, so I've already got my Overseer's Guardian equipped. That's my default weapon. I've mentioned in multiple videos how I think this is probably the best weapon in the game when you turn it into a sniper rifle and you've got a sneak build. In fact, I even did a weapon comparison video where I stacked a radium rifle that had the two shot legendary effect and the Overseer's Guardian I think was still even better than that. So you can't get much better than that. If you want to know how to get your hands on the Overseer's Guardian, I made a whole video about that. Not trying to make this video a big promotional video from all my other videos, but if I've made a past video that can help you guys out, then I will uh, put that link down below and you guys can uh, check it out of your own volition. Okay, besides that, I will start at the top and work our way down. Uh, the Acme Disintegrator is my funny name for the Alien Blaster. I really love this weapon because once I ended up putting perks into science, then the weapon no longer uses that rare ammo. It now uses uh, fusion cells, which I, you can see I have a, just a crazy amount of fusion cells. I like this weapon because it has just a massive fire rate and uh, I can basically just machine gun things with the trigger. It's got a huge range. So when I'm range finding enemies out in the open and I don't know where they are, I hit bats, I got this thing equipped and it will seek them out. So that is another reason I keep this. And uh, I call it the Acme Disintegrator because it's a little nod to Marvin the Martian. Okay, Cryomine, I don't know why I carry this. I think they're just kind of cool. If I have my facts straight, uh, it will freeze some enemies if they trigger it, which is, in my opinion, better than uh, a regular mine. Well, basically for two reasons. Uh, one, because if they're frozen, I can get much more shots on them before they uh, can approach me. And two, it's not gonna disrupt the environment where it's gonna scatter loot around. I've had a few occasions where I've planted mines, they've stepped on them and some valuable items ended up falling behind desks or clipped through the floor, always a pain in the butt. The cryo mines don't seem to do that and they still do probably the same damage as the frag mines so and they affect all creatures equally so that's pretty awesome i haven't found many creatures that have resistances to cryonics or anything and speaking of cryonics i got the cryolator uh, this is my ba weapon for boss fights uh, as a matter of fact i made a video about this one where i uh, pitted the cryolator against a death claw matriarch I won't spoil the outcome if you guys want to watch that video, but the Cryolator, I'll tell you right now, is just a beast. So I'll put a link for that video and you guys can check it out if you want. All right, the Deliverer is my probably second favorite weapon besides the Overseer's Guardian. If you have a sneak build and you're just starting Fallout 4, you've got to get your hands on the Deliverer. Uh, you basically go through the Railroad Faction quests. I made videos about that. The Freedom Trail and the Tradecraft quests. So I'll put links for those as well. Boy, there's gonna be a lot of referenced videos actually in the comments section. Just trying to help you guys out. So uh, yeah, this thing, is just awesome. Unfortunately, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it gets just a sick amount of uh, shots in vats, primarily because of its legendary effect, but also because of the way it's built. And then also, as you can see from the right there, I've uh, managed to really trick this thing out through a combination of just self-modding it and also completing the weather vane quests for Tinker Tom and he will sell you extra mods for that. You can just buy off them and add them yourself and you don't need the gun nut perk. 
Speaking of perks, I know you guys are probably looking down at the bottom right corner of my screen and seeing 10 unspent perks. Paul, what is your problem? Are you just lazy or what? No, the truth of the matter is, is that I've gotten to the point where I don't know what I want to spend my perks on, and I'm actually saving them for my next trivia walkthrough, where I'll spend a bunch of them, and you guys can, uh, you know, see some of the things I'm going to spend them on, because at this point, it's pretty much all gravy. My epic sneak build is basically beyond the pale, and I even have it on very hard difficulty. So, oh, this guy is my favorite character. This guy just blows my Skyrim character away, my previous Fallout 4 characters away. He's probably one of my favorite characters in any video game that I've ever played. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, the next item down below deliver is the hallucinogen gas grenade. Uh, these things weigh a pound each, so it's not the most efficient thing to carry around weight wise, but they are a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, I did a boss kill uh, using a single hallucinogen gas grenade in my automatron episodes, and it was just so much fun. I will put a link to that video as well, but you guys got to check that out if you haven't seen it. And if you don't know what the hallucinogen gas grenades are, I made a video about that as well, and I'll put a link down below they basically cause the enemies to frenzy and they will attack each other if they're unaware of your presence which if you have a sneak build is perfect so you basically uh toss a you know hallucinogen gas grenade into a crowd of enemies and they'll all just kill each other and i'm not positive but i think you still even get xp for it i could be wrong about that Okay, Duger grenades. All right, these things are just hellacious. Uh, I've basically collected a bunch of them because I send the iBot using the, uh, I believe it's the Automatron DLC. Once you complete the Automatron DLC, you can actually collect and find some schematics for an iBot that will go and seek out ammunition or explosives. So I just keep sending the iBot out to find Nuka grenades and he finds me cool new locations to explore as well. So I've got probably, I don't know, 30 of them or something sitting in stash, I'm only carrying around six. But if I ever need to just absolutely destroy a boss from a distance, then I'm gonna be using these things. In fact, I'm gonna try to make it a point to try to use them somewhere in Far Harbor. I've got to use these things because they're just sitting there taking up space and they could be a lot of fun. Okay, the Spray and Pray is an awesome gun. I've got this thing fully tricked out as well. I think it's got every possible mod on it at its maximum and uh, don't need the gun nut perk for it. A lot of people ask me how you do that. What you gotta do is you basically have to wait for other weapons of the same type, in this case, a submachine gun, and you gotta pull the mods off of those, or you can purchase them at uh, weapons vendors and then pull the mods off of them and add them to your own gun. It's a, a process that I probably should have made a video about a long time ago. If I had, it would be in the tens of thousands of views now. So I'm a total idiot for not doing that. I don't know if it's too late to do it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. If I get a lot of demand for that, I might. But uh, yeah, that's basically how you do it if you don't want to spend the perks on Gun Nut or any of the other crafting skills. Okay, this thing is awesome. It does uh, exploding damage in an air of effect. And since it's fully auto, you can just waste enemies. And once again, made an awesome video where I pitted the spray and pray against a Myrler Queen. You guys got to check out that video. It was a lot of fun. Almost died in that video, as a matter of fact, because those queens are uh, are just hellacious creatures. And But the spray and pray, it does the job. So you guys got to check that out. Lastly, I carry around the kneecapper. And this thing is basically my uh, little sister to the deliverer. It's also a 10 millimeter pistol. The the reason I carried around is because it's also fully tricked out as well. Got the best of every possible mod on it. It's cool looking. I like it. The reason I carried around is because of that crippling chance. That 20%, when you basically just unload in vats, that 20% is gonna come up. I mean, that's a one in five chance. So you shoot them five times and you're probably gonna get one of those uh, shots that hits that 20% mark and it will cripple their legs. So I use this thing mainly for bosses and also when I'm getting totally amassed <laughs> by enemies, they know where I am and they're charging me from all directions. If you guys saw my Automatron DLC, this thing saved the day. I couldn't have taken on the mechanists and all the robots without this thing. I mean, I could have used some of these other ones, Deliverer, Overseer's Guardian, 
opinion, but uh, I probably would have died several times. The kneecapper saved the day. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's the right tool for the right job, and uh, this thing definitely comes in handy. So that's why I keep it. All right, guys, well, that's going to round out this episode. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll try to answer them for you. But uh, yeah, uh, hopefully that explains the full loadout for this character, uh, gear, weapons, all that jazz. So now I can just refer people to this video when they ask, what is he wearing? <laughs> What's that cap he's wearing? It's really cool. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was really helpful. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't for more of these fun Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. You know, little extra credit tidbits and all kinds of fun stuff in Fallout 4. Shatter that like button, share the video around, and we'll see you next time on The School Zone. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>